Hello, I'm Darm again. The topic for today comes from a variety of questions around the same topic. Questions include, can you help a narcissistic person change? What happens when you try to help someone who's narcissistic? And why are narcissistic people so resistant to change? Which kind of answers the previous two questions. But today, I'll answer these questions. I'll also look at what happens to those who try to help narcissistic people change. So if you find this topic to be interesting, please consider subscribing. But to begin with, remember, narcissism is on a spectrum. There's many different kinds, many different types. If you will, there's many different shades, colors, and intensities. So it's never really a one-size-fits-all answer. Sometimes the narcissism could be situational or it could be low level. In other words, they're just self-absorbed. Sometimes someone might actually be open to change, but then there are those who have no motivation to change. Why would they? They're fine as they are. It's everyone else who is the problem. But for the sake of this discussion, I will be referring to those with very deeply ingrained traits. The behaviours, the characteristics are present all day and every day. And some of those characteristics include a huge sense of entitlement. They're very envious of others and believe others should be envious of them. There is a constant need for attention and validation. They can be highly disagreeable and highly resistant to criticism. There is also a lack of empathy for other people. And I will be referring to a narcissistic partner, although the same could apply to friends, family members, work colleagues, pretty much any kind of relationship with a narcissist. So the first question would be, why would someone want to help a narcissist change? Well, there could be many reasons. There could be love. There could be sympathy. There could be a lot of things going on, but I think the most obvious reason is because that narcissistic person is making their lives a bloody misery. So what happens when someone tries to help them change? Well, first of all, narcissistic people need constant attention and validation. With covert narcissism, they often see a perpetual sense of victimhood and helplessness. The more someone tries to help them, encourage them, make the world a better place for them, the more they feed off that, which is why nothing ever seems to work. Every solution has a problem. So when trying to help them, this actually validates their sense of helplessness. In fact, you often see the vulnerability increase. There are more and more problems, more and more issues, just to get someone to help them even more. With grandiose narcissism, well, they're already perfect and flawless. But someone trying to encourage them, bring out the best in them, plead with them, do things to try to be the perfect partner or make the world the perfect place for them, well, this validates how important and special they believe they are. But regardless of how the narcissism presents, the more someone tries to make things better for them, it gives them the intention they crave, it validates their behaviour. In a lot of cases, it actually enables them to continue. They demand more. Secondly, narcissistic people have a huge sense of entitlement. They don't necessarily want to be helped. They more want things to be done for them. It's up to others to give them the best because they believe they deserve the best. The more people try to help them, the less responsibility they take. Those closest to them often end up becoming responsible for how they feel, what they think, even their actions. And again, the more someone tries to ease their outrage, their upset, their distress, to give them what they want, the more that enables their sense of entitlement. That being said, when things are working out for them, when they're in a good mood, when they're happy, well, that's got nothing to do with anyone else. It's all them. Narcissism can be quite parasitical. Sometimes, even if they genuinely ask for help with something, they don't necessarily want help. They want someone to do it for them. Also, they like others to run about trying to find solutions for them. Remember, many narcissistic people feed off attention. Chaos is one way of getting attention. They enjoy others trying to fix their problems. But if the solution involves them having to do something about themselves or for themselves, or maybe just doing something different, then it's rejected. Number three, trying to change a narcissist can grind you down. People with very deeply ingrained narcissistic traits tend to be resistant to change. One reason being, to change would mean having to admit there was something wrong, some kind of flaw, in the first place. Remember, narcissistic people are either highly resistant or highly sensitive to anything they consider to be criticism. They have a fragile sense of self, so any suggestions of change can be seen as criticism, and that can feel like an attack on their very identity, and this can lead them to become defensive. 
when someone points out a particular behaviour that's causing a problem, no matter how it's communicated, it could feel like a personal attack, so they double down, intensify their behaviour, or just keep going on as they are, often feigning confusion as to why there's a problem in the first place. They tend to deny everything they're confronted with, claim others are overreacting, are far too sensitive, are selfish, or insane. So they blame shift, lie, dig their heels in, justify themselves, but ultimately just continue as they are until their partner is emotionally and mentally exhausted and just accepts it is what it is. Number four, narcissistic people lack empathy for others so they might not understand or indeed care about the impact their behaviour has on others. Some might even get a kick out of it, but everything is about what they want, how they feel, Others are secondary, even those closest to them. And lacking empathy, they could find it difficult to validate other people's experiences, their feelings, their ideas. Because validating others might feel as if they're invalidating themselves. They would have to acknowledge flaw, error. They would have to acknowledge a part of themselves they don't want to acknowledge. Their defence mechanisms kick in and the responsibility for the consequences of their actions is rejected. All the fault, responsibility, the negative uncomfortable feelings, these are dumped out onto others, usually those who pointed out the need for change in the first place. Number five, another common characteristic of narcissism is being very disagreeable, which is one of the reasons why when someone suggests or offers something, even if it's in their own best interest, they might reject it. If it's not their idea, then it's a bad idea. Narcissistic people can be very controlling, and they don't like to feel as if they're being controlled. So if they were asked to change something by their partner, they might feel as if the partner now has some kind of power over them, so they reject it. Now, being disagreeable, by the way, doesn't always mean an outright no to everything. They could respond with confusion, counter accusations, crying that they're the ones who are being abused, or make a list of things the other person has to change first. Next, Narcissistic people tend to only really have surface level, superficial relationships. They tend to struggle with emotional intimacy. Being emotionally close to someone does require a level of vulnerability. It means others seeing flaws, errors and weaknesses as well as strengths and qualities. Narcissistic people don't want to look at their own flaws. They don't want other people to see them either. So a lot of their behaviours are aimed at keeping people at an emotional arm's length. They can, however, keep their partners hooked with promises they've no intention of keeping. Things like, things will get better whenever you're less like this and more like that and so on. But no matter what the partner does, it's never enough. Yeah, you did do what I asked, but you weren't thinking the right thought while you were doing it. But don't worry, you're getting there, you're getting closer, you're nearly there. But in reality, the partner never gets any further, no matter how hard they try to improve things. The most they might get are some crumbs of encouragement or a little bit of affection here and there, just to keep them trying. Next, as I said a moment ago, narcissistic people don't like flaws and weaknesses. They like the partner whenever they're trying to move heaven and earth just to make them happy. But when they inevitably fail or they get tired or maybe try to communicate needs of their own, well now they are less than perfect. And this can be whenever the devaluation and the discard begins. If the partner says no to something, they are vilified and rejected. If the partner says they can't, they are considered worthless. Which leads me on to number eight. When someone has nothing left to give, nothing left to try, they are emotionally, financially, mentally broken, then they are of no further value to a narcissist. Even though everything they may have tried failed, that narcissistic person didn't entirely reject everything. They now have new ideas, information, phrases and resources and they take them and they move on to someone else. For instance, if they were given money to wipe out their debt, they now move on debt free to someone else. If they were encouraged to be kind and attentive, will they move on to someone new and be kind and attentive with them just to reel them in? And the cycle continues. So there are just some common examples of what happens whenever someone tries to change or help a narcissistic person. Which asks the question, can a narcissist change? Well, remember what I said earlier, narcissism, it's like everything else, it's on a spectrum. 
So I will say, yes, they can change, but I'm going to add a caveat to that. They would have to want to change. They would have to be prepared to put the work in. The most other people can do is support and encourage. It can't be done to them and it can't be done for them. They would have to do the work. But the difficulty with narcissism is because of those maladaptive defense mechanisms, taking responsibility for themselves is very difficult. The problems always lie outside of them. They're always external. It's everything and everyone else's fault. Therefore, the solutions lie outside of them as well. It's up to everyone else to do the work. They're afraid to admit their errors because it undermines their sense of self and makes them feel bad about themselves. And also, from a narcissist's perspective, why would they want to change? What they do seems to work for them. Gets them what they want. Gets them out of difficult situations. Gets them out of having to accept responsibility. Gets them out of having to commit to anything. And gets them out of having to face reality. So to summarize, People with very deeply ingrained narcissistic traits tend to resist change which can lead to frustration, disappointment and feelings of helplessness in those who try to help them. They tend to be very demanding but people think that giving them what they want will help them when in reality it only really enables their behaviour. Eventually people can emotionally and mentally exhaust themselves. Many end up blaming themselves for how things went or blame themselves for getting involved in the first place. But what I would like to say is, there is no shame in having been on the wrong end of a narcissist. There is no shame in having been lied to or in having been fooled. And sometimes the things we do for others come from a good place. Many narcissistic people exploit that good place in us for their own means, for their own ends. So there are my thoughts on what happens when someone tries to change or help a narcissist. Now as always, please feel free to use the comments section for anything I may have missed. And if there is anything you may have found helpful in your recovery, and if you feel okay to do so, please share it. Because someone reading it might benefit from your wisdom and your experience. But if you find this topic to be helpful, please consider subscribing. And until next time, thanks for watching.